There is somewhat of a blurry line that exists between image acquisition and image processing. I explore this boundary during what I call my office hours. People basically bring their problems to me and we look and study it and try to determine what the issue is and of course how to go about solving it. So there's a process in doing that and in this lesson I intend to show you the way in which I go about solving problems. So even if this particular issue that you see on the screen is not your problem, using my methodology, my technique for solving problems, I am hoping will be beneficial to you in solving your own. Now, as I say, there is often a relationship between the equipment or the way in which the data was gathered or acquired that some, in some way affects the image processing. And many of the problems that people bring to me are of that type. And this is a perfect example. So let me just indicate what the problem is here. This particular imager, the complaint is, we'll call him John. John presented this issue and the complaint was that every time John applies flat fields to his data, he result, the result is this overcorrected image. And what I intend to show you in this lesson is not only the way in which I solved John's problem, we figured out what the problem was, and I can tell you the answer in just under a minute here, what the problem is, but then you'll miss out on many of the other attributes of this problem that are also interesting. Just by virtue of going through the exercise of determining this particular problem, I can also demonstrate how to fine tune flat field images. Although at the end of the day, once we figured out what the problem is, it wasn't necessary to do so, but perhaps we were unable to, for one reason or another, fix the problem. There are still ways to get unstuck. There's a way to make this image that you see on the screen look like the image that is behind it here, the corrected version. So here is the before, and just by doing it either correctly with the, uh, the proper kinds of data or by compensating for the fact that the data, that correct data was not available, you can fine tune the flat to still make it work out at the end of the day. So this is the idea that I want to show you. And there is one last part that is specific to this particular data set, which is I'd like to um, explain the kind of the functional equivalence of what are called flat darks and biases. Now there is some semantics that I'll go into, but there is a functional equivalence in the way in which you use them. And I think that there is some confusion about that um, as well. And so that will all be included in this particular lesson. So let me go through the process of setting things up in the way in which I approach a problem like this. We need to understand something about the data, what we're looking at, what we're looking for, things like that. Remember, this, this is the problem. And uh, what is interesting about this particular problem, or at least it was somewhat annoying, is in the course of um, calibrating the data, because the initial exposures are so short, you really don't see the error until you have actually integrated all of the files together. So you go through and you calibrate everything and so on, but looking at an individual frame by eye, it's not really striking that there is a problem. You can see it there, and once you know that it's there, uh, but it isn't striking. It's only until you have uh, co-added, until you've integrated all of that information together, then, then you can see that there is an issue that looks something like this. Now, one thing that should be said, of course, is that Many people might result, you know, have a result which looks like this and they go, okay, well, that's the way it's going to be. And I'm just going to go use, uh, you know, background extraction. I'll use dynamic background extraction. I'll take care of it. And you know what? DBE will actually take care of this. But that's not the point. The point of this is to find the root cause. You shouldn't have to use DBE to take care of it. And it will never be as good a substitute as finding the initial problem itself. You will get a better result if you can in, you know, eliminate whatever this issue is, not try to compensate for it through processing. 
So that is an important lesson. That is something that I have in my head. I don't just, you know, just because, yes, we have the tool to do that doesn't mean that we should have to compensate be- with that tool instead of uh, getting it right in the beginning. So with all of that in mind, let's actually look at what the, you know, what the data looks like. I'm just going to open up some examples using Blink here. Let me navigate to the right place on my hard drive. Here is John's data. And I'm just going to open up, uh, you know, some dark frames. Well, let's just, let's do them in order here. We'll just verify that the dark frames look okay. And I will give you a sneak peek or a, uh, not a sneak peek, but I will tell you in advance that all of the data really does look okay. But here's what a dark frame looks like. I mean, that looks perfectly fine to me. So that looks okay. Let's look at, these are the flat field images. Now I only have one channel's worth of data here. Um, This was something that was going on in all of the channels, but it, you know, solving it in one channel will solve it everywhere. So the flats look perfectly normal. They are okay. Also what we have with this data are the, uh, the actual data. So I'll just show you, you know, some real data here. This is the data of the galaxy itself. This is what it looks like in a three minute exposure. Those darks were three minutes in time. So if we flip through them, you get typical kind of variation, not a lot of signal there. That's what it looks like in three minutes. And then finally, because this chip that's being used is one of these, it's a cooled CMOS chip, but it is a CMOS chip. So you have to take what are called uh, flat darks, what I will call an electronic signature, because I want to give it a new name. I think that there is some confusion about this. Uh, but you need to take these flat darks, which are located here. So let's look at these. So these are exactly the same exposure time as the flats. The flats were 1.08 seconds. These are also 1.08 seconds. So we'll look at these, and just by visual inspection, they. I mean, they look okay. Who can say there's anything wrong with that? So that's what the data looks like. Now we'll go through the process of, you know, loading it into WBPP, running it, and ending up with this result here. But I'll show you how that looks. We're going to dive into the weighted batch preprocessing script now and basically just reproduce what we see here on the screen. So I've saved this image to disk. We can open it up later if we need to, but we're about to reproduce it by just running it uh, the script as you normally would. So I'll go here to the weighted batch preprocessing, and I'm just gonna load the files individually because I'm gonna show you uh, kind of what is an issue. It's somewhat related, but as it turns out, it wasn't the actual problem. So here are the dark frames. When I open them, of course, it's going to put it into the darks uh, field or tab here. Then we have, uh, let's just do the flats. Here are the flat field images here. And they're gonna load properly as well. Below them, I can see the data, but I'm just gonna do it one at a time so we can watch them all be loaded here. They're loaded. Now we'll go ahead and do the data frames. So this is the actual picture of the galaxy in this case. You'll notice that I'm only dealing with one color channel because if we're able to solve the problem in this one channel, just the red data, then it'll apply to all the other channels, all the other data. So one channel's worth of information was sufficient. Now the last set of files I'm going to load are going to be what are labeled here as flat darks. Now I'm going to be demonstrating that in terms of functionality, The way that we use these flat darks is synonymous with a bias, functionally. Now we can talk about semantically what the difference is between a flat dark and a bias, and that deals with the vagaries of CCD cameras and CMOS chips. We'll get into that. But functionally, what you actually do in the program, they can basically be treated the same. 
And I find it unfortunate that uh, this script somehow tries to treat them differently uh, because I think that that adds some confusion. So I'll get back to that. But for the moment, here is another small issue. It's not a major one, but it's a small one. I'm going to load these flat darks. This is a kind of error that anyone could do. And we would expect them maybe to go into the dark frame tab, but they don't. Oh no, where are they? Well, it very likely means that the type of file that they were tagged as when the data was acquired, and that is controlled by the software that took them, was not tagged as a dark frame. It must have been tagged as something else. Maybe it was tagged as a light frame. Nope, it's not there. Maybe it was tagged as a flat frame because uh, when John took the data, he thought, oh, well, these are flat darks. They need to be associated with the flats, so I'm going to call them flats. Of course, that isn't the case. They actually are a kind of dark frame. They just match in time the flat field images. So if I go under flats, I will now see, it's kind of hard to tell here, but I will see not only do I have these red flat, uh, just regular red flats, but now I also have red flat darks. That is not where we want them to be. So I am going to remove them from here because that's not correct. So that was the error. And to be more specific, I'm going to remove selected. I'm going to create a process here that saves my work. So I'll run this and just load this up again. But I want to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. It's a typical error. So if we open up one of those flat darks here, and then we look at the file header, fits header specifically, you'll see that the image type here is called flat. We needed the image type here to be called dark. That's how, of course, um, a script like uh, batch preprocessing is, is going to handle the files by looking at the fixed header, and then from this header information, determine how to uh, deal with each of these files, where to put them. So I'm not going to, of course, go in, modify each file and change it, which you can do. You can actually edit these files and then change particular parameters here. But instead of doing that, because there are a lot of them, we will go back here and we're going to just use the custom button. I'm going to force them to be in the darks tab. So we're going to add custom. We add the files. Now the flat field images, I didn't show it was actually there. They are one 0.08 seconds, and so are these darks. So um, in order to make it match, I need to be sure to tell the script here that they are the same time, and that way they'll match them exactly. So I'm going to hit open, and then the image type, these are dark frames. The binning is 1, exposure time, as I said, is 1.08. And now they're going to go into the darks tab, but as a separate thing. So that makes sense. And I don't have anything in the biases because with a CMOS camera, effectively you don't take a zero second exposure and use it. You take an exposure that is an electronically, um, an electronic signature exposure, which matches whatever the data is. In this case, it's a flat. So you need to match that electronic signature so you can subtract that signature from your flat before you use them. That's the idea. That's the semantics I'm going to use for the moment. So going through here, we can create, of course, masters of these. Averaging with Windsor Eye Sigma clipping, it's fine. Now you can uh, have it automatically figure things out, but I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, it's specifying here. Uh, for the flats, we have, again, average, and it has an auto here. It's, it's fine. I don't care. It can figure out what it needs to do. And then we have our lights. Uh, we want to do calibrate only, which is good. I'm not going to worry about the cosmetic correction. The exposure tolerance, we want zero. We don't want any 
we wanted to match it exactly or give up basically so no tolerance there one thing though uh, that we want to have checked of course is this calibrate with flat darks what this means is it's going to go to the darks tab and it'll look for a dark that completely matches whatever the exposure time is here 1.08 seconds and it's going to see this at 1.08 seconds and it should just be happy so let's specify uh, an output directory in the output directory here I need to go to someplace on my computer here is where we're going to put the output directory and I'll run oh well before I run it let me show you the diagnostics the diagnostics are that it says warning no bias frames have been selected well yeah that's right there are no bias frames when you're using flat darks so that's okay and we're gonna go ahead and hit run this of course is going to take a moment so I'm going to pause and magically you don't have to wait around to see the result by the way I want to add something here and um, maybe there's something about WBPP that I don't understand all I wanted to do was calibrate the data but it's still going to do the analysis of the images which we don't need to do uh, I'm not going to be doing any combining or weighting or anything so why do the analysis this is one reason why I usually use BPP to uh, you know work with stuff because it doesn't do this analysis um, if I'm just calibrating only uh, but here we are we, we completed so okay now what we should have is a directory that is filled with uh, calibrated data I'm gonna go ahead and just exit out of here and uh, let's just complete this series of steps by going to our star alignment and we need to load files so this is going to be the reference image we can pick any you know any image we want really I'm just gonna pick the first one they're all all the data is fine the files we want to add all of them and then we're going to name a directory I'm just gonna go ahead and create a, a nested directory here that'll just be called registered And that's it I'm gonna go ahead and just align these oh I don't want to generate any drizzle data align these images really quickly and then we'll combine them and see that result so it aligned them now we'll just go ahead and combine them using image integration this is old stuff so let's add the registered files here Um, as far as the settings are concerned I'm not going to do anything special at all probably just Windsorized uh, did I do Windsorized? yeah they're Windsorized and then sure those are fine settings so we just do it alright so the amount of rejection really doesn't matter we're just looking to see if the Don't tell me. Oh, it's over here. <laughs> I was going to say, don't tell me I closed it. We can see we have the same problem, and we do. We are not surprised. This is exactly how you produced the problem. Now, I would like to show you something else um, concerning this. Well, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to show you that. This is the problem, and I will show you that the solution can be reached in a couple of different ways. But fundamentally, we just need to decide you know the data that was taken everything that you saw me do was absolutely 100 percent correct as far as we could tell by inspection the way we looked at the data everything looked correct so we have this result and we have to say something is wrong where is it and how do we proceed to go about finding it so let me show you a few things that I considered in solving this problem 